Hello, welcome along. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Another product review for you today. Um, this is the um, One Man Army mass set for the Supermarine Spitfire Mark 5B, 124 scale, and it's for the Trumpeter kit. So um, if you've got that kit and you want, don't want to use the transfers in or the decals in the kit, which probably aren't very nice at all, you can get this. So um, this is actually set number 24DET015. If you haven't seen me review these these uh, masks before, I'll cover it completely. I'll cover some hints and tips. I won't be doing any demos, but I will show you some finished results. So on the front of the um, envelope here, there'll be printed out card envelope. We've got some examples. You can see some of the stencils here. So not only do you get stencil masks, you also get masks for all your roundels, all your registration codes, all the writing that's on the aircraft. Absolutely everything is in here. So um. The biggest advantage of these is one, I mean, the the, mat, the the actual decals in the trumpeter kit probably aren't very nice at all. Um, if you have a Hobby Boss kit, I would thoroughly recommend these because Hobby Boss transfers aren't very nice. Um, so you've got the, the, the beauty of not having to use very low quality um, decals. You have the advantage of being able to choose the correct colours. We've, we've all seen it. If you're, um, you know, into accuracy and stuff, we've all seen it, particularly on the Asian models, they get all the colours wrong. The, the blues are generally too bright. The reds are generally too bright on the roundels. They get the, the yellows wrong, <laughs> um, basically. And, and, and you, you get to choose your own colours. And also, it's much, much easier to weather them back. You know, there's no sealing in to do. There's no clear coats to put down beforehand. You know, there's lots and lots of pluses to using these to using these rather than using the decals. The only downside to these is is actually putting them on, getting them in the right place first time, and making a really good job of it. That's the bit that takes a bit of skill, but you do get masks to practice with, so um, that's always an added bonus. So, going inside the envelope, we have our masks and we have our generic instructions, which I'll cover in a minute. So we can put all this to one side. Um, so we have here the, the actual insides of the, uh, of, the, of the book, and this is giving us all our locations for our stencils. Um, you can see the numbers. Um, if there are colours or whatever, anything that's a bit sort of dubious, then um, Sven will actually write in here, here you go, check your references as to colour, 12 volt yellow, rest black. You know, is the 12 volt bit in yellow, is the rest in black? Check your references. Obviously there's variations. Um, the, 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 the Sven has seen through his, re his reference work. So uh, make sure you get that right. Um, I would recommend as well, if you are looking at, you know, building a, a Spitfire, making it accurate, Wing Leader do some fantastic books on the Spitfire and they will give you all the accurate reference you need. They're full of wartime images, not restorations, which is what you generally find online. And you can see here more of the same. So we've got the underside, we've got the top side. And then going over onto the back, we have the the versions available in this set. Now I don't have this kit. I don't know. Usually what Sven does is gives you the options that are available in the kit and then maybe an option, an extra one as well. But basically um, I would imagine these are probably the two options in the kit. So we've got Mark 5B, RAF Squadron Leader, Bocek, Kozhovsky, um, 303 Polish Squadron, BL670 March 42 in North Holt. And then here we've got um, <clears throat> Mark 5 RAF Squadron Leader, LH Buck Kassen, 616 Squadron, W3458, July 41, Tangmere. So um, two different options there. Obviously, if you're going to go for the Polish one, there's going to be some, uh, some, some extra bits and pieces to do, which are going to be a little bit tricky. So if you're new to all this, you might want to go for the, for the English version. Also worth noting in here, we've got masking uh, for the propellers, for the actual stencils on the propellers. And we've also got the, um, the, the door marking, which is a nice touch as well, because quite often... I can't remember which way around it is. People often give you a decal for the inside of the door if you're having the door open and it's red or it should be black or it's black and it should be red. I can't remember now. It's given, actually included the mask in there. So that's a nice touch. And obviously you've got all your round doors as well. Thin flashes and fuselage both sides. For doing these round doors and stuff, I've done a few videos um, on this and you can go and watch. There's lots and lots of different ways you can do these round doors. Um, and you can choose your own. You actually have uh, some words here that Sven has put in about, you know, doing his, his suggested way of doing it. But you can go and watch my videos and you can make your own mind up which way around you want to do it. Um, 
So we've got some disclaimer here about some symbols being offensive and everything. So uh, there we go. And then we've got a legend down here, which is um, X is a spare mask. ABC is a layered mask. Um, I'll go through that in a second. Transfer tape, I'll go through that as well. And there we are. So um, generic instructions. You can see in here, generic instructions, preparing the mask. Um, this is what I always do. It's something that Sven suggested. It's a fantastic idea is get a little piece of masking tape and put it under the bottom left hand corner of each mask. Serves two purposes. It shows you the bottom left hand corner. So if it's something like a, you know, a Japanese, um, what's the, name of the, the rising sun, um, left hand corner. If you are doing overlays of stuff onto it, then you've always got the bottom left hand corner identified. Sometimes you will get masks where you you have a shape inside a square and you lay the square over the, over the other square. sort of, And then you, you know which is the bottom left then. Um, for instance, if you're doing the Qatari Spitfire, that's the way that one works. You've got squares to go over squares. And if you do this, you always get the bottom left. If you actually get them 90 degrees out, you'll end up with your, your circles being off center. Um, here you can see there's a bit of a mask stuck in there. Basically, these are very fine masks, as you'll see in a minute. If you do get that, you just come in with a fine knit and point and just take it off. Here you can see we've got a piece of purple tape with a line and the line marks the center. So you've, you're actually pre-arranging where you want to put it. So you've got a straight line to butt the mask up against. So you get that 27 there square. Um, and then here you've got on the, um, the wing trailing edge, you've got your no walks or no steps, whatever. Um, straight piece of tape, mark off the individual positions you're going to have them at. And then you can put your, your walkway markings in there. Here, this is a, a great one. Um, you've got a no step on the, on the wing tip. Uh, if you want to transfer it so it's in the position on the other side, this is the starboard side. If you want to get it on the same on the on the port side, get a piece of masking tape, just a scrap piece, put it over the top. He's marked the panel lines on here. We've got a V, which is marking the center of that no step mark. Then we take that off, lay it down, sticky side up, put a piece of tape on it, transfer that to the other wing, line up the marks on the panel lines that you've got. And then you can put your mask in there, lined up with that V in the center. And then you'll have that no step mark in exactly the same position on both sides, which is always uh, nice to have. And then going over the page, you've got the use of transfer tape. Transfer tape is, uh, is critical. So basically here you can see bottom left hand corner lift up, weeding on the paper. So sometimes you'll weed on the paper, sometimes you'll weed on the model. So weeding on the paper, so pulling out all the bits for the mask for the number three. Now, obviously, if you try to lift this number three now, the mask would go all out of shape and you lose your shape. So piece of transfer tape over the top, any tape, masking tape, any Tamiya tape, ordinary masking tape, whatever will do. And then you've got that on there and then you can place that on your model and then remove the transfer tape. And as you can see, the three has held its shape. Coming down to here, we're going to do an American star um, in, a, in a circle. So we're going to basically take the, uh, the mask here. Put the transfer tape on to remove the circle from the, the mask obviously put the transfer tape on to keep it round and then we're going to transfer that onto the model okay and you can see here what he's done is darken the corners so that you can see the corners easier when you actually come to lay the other mask on top so you're going to spray your white on there or whatever is the blue or whatever color it is going to be and then you're doing the same again from the basking tape you're going to weed out the star Put the transfer tape on and then lift that rectangle off and place it on your model again bottom left hand corner is lifted as you can see and that denotes the bottom left hand corner place that over with all the corners perfectly um, aligned and then that will get that star aligned in that circle for you so there we go so that's what transfer tapes and these squares and that are all about i've noticed of late sven doesn't tend to do these squares anymore um, having said that it looks like he has on this set so well we'll have a look in a second so there we are, there's your hints and tips, um, which I generally cover in all the videos. So sorry if you've had to listen to that for the umpteenth time. So what have we got here? We have the actual masking sheets. We've got two sheets here. We've got the main one and a smaller one. So basically what we've got here is our roundels. Now, you can see this is 1A. So basically you can use different variations. You can spray the whole model blue okay or spray the whole area blue and then you can put your roundel down and then spray your model and then come in afterwards and paint the red or you can actually do all your camouflage first and then you can um, use the masks to do your blue first do your red first whatever so you basically put transfer tape over this whole mask okay remove that whole square i hope you can see it it's basically a 
if I put the light on, I think it makes it easier to see. There you go. You can see you've got a roundel in there within a square. So basically you're going to put a piece of transfer tape over, mark the bottom left hand corner with a piece of tape, put the tape under there, makes it easier to lift off and marks the left hand corner. Place that on your wing in position. You can mark some center lines here, whatever you want to get your, mark your roundel in position first. Put your mask down on your aircraft and then you're going to um, lift your transfer tape. Okay. And then use another piece of transfer tape on here. And then you can lift this, the, uh, this, all of this out. You can spray the blue and then you put all of that back in. Just remove the center part, mask off around the edge and then spray the red. Okay. Or you can use these in there as well. Okay. So you can, you might want to spray, um, spray the red and then place that in there, remove that out and spray the, and then spray the, um, the blue. So what you would do then use transfer tape, put the whole thing on the model. Okay. Um, weed out the weed out the center spray the red put the center back in and then remove the outer ring and spray the blue you may just choose to do it that way that saves you having a mask off around the edge it's it's horses for courses um, as I say go back and watch my videos if you search one man army on my sort of home page sort of thing you'll find there I've done lots of one man army videos on how to go about different ways of doing it um, and then here we've got more roundels for the wings, we've got roundels for the fuselage sides, and then we've got our registration codes here, we've got some writing, and then we've got some stencils here which you can see are very nice indeed. So you've got all your um, 100 octane capacity, 85 gallons, we've got our WT markings there, and then uh, not to be walked on, we've got some uh, little stencils here, we've got jack here, and we've got some dots, we've got our fin flashes there. So you've got your fin flash mask there, um, so you can basically put that on the model, mask around it, and then put these bits inside it as and when required to do your red, white and blue. And then here on the smaller sheet, we have some walkway markings. You may decide to actually um, paint black first, then put the walkway markings down and then spray your model, or you could actually use these um, and get your, get your lines down. Entirely up to you, you might just decide to use ordinary masking tape. But um, it's there should you want to use it. And then here we've got the rock check. That's his name. So basically you'll weed this on the paper here. Take all the W, you know, all that out. And then put a piece of transfer tape over the top. Transfer it to the model. Remove the transfer tape and spray your colour, whatever it's going to be. Um, here you've got your Polish flag. So what you're going to do there, you're going to take this P. Okay, you've got the, the P there. Take that one again piece of tape on the bottom left hand corner, get it in position, spray the white. Okay. And now what you're going to do, I got, I got lost there, what I was thinking. Okay. So you're going to put the P on, you're going to spray the white. Okay. And then you've got these three here. You can see these three squares here. They've got a T under them. T is for transfer. So that becomes transfer tape. So you can take one of those squares, place it over this little lot here. Okay. And then transfer all of that and place it inside the square over the white. And then you can weed out the little bits you want to be red. Okay, there's a, you've got it on the instructions here. There's a Polish flag there. So you can basically weed out those bits that you want to be red. Spray it lightly with red. Remember, keep it, keep the paint dry. Don't flood it or it'll creep under. And then you'll remove all of that and you'll have that on there. And then you can lightly sand it to level it all out. It's, um, it's uh, it's very, very enjoyable and it's very satisfying. And over here you can see we've got the, the um, stencil markings for the uh, propeller. And then here we've got stencil markings for the inside of the, of the door there. We've got some more roundels. Um, and then we've got some more masks here for your, uh, for your trestles. You've got an X there, registration codes electrical and you can see what Sven's done here he's got like a big lollipop and uh, what he's done is put this on here and then you can line that circle up with the round panel that it's going on to so if you've got the trumpeter kit I would say this is a, a must now something Sven always does um, he always sends me a black card with a sample of some of the uh, stencils and stuff on it. it makes it much easier to see so you can see there we have the uh, ever ready N Up there we have the the uh, registration code there, we have Vostek, Vostek, I'm not sure, 
I'm sure somebody from Poland can tell me. Um, and then we have the ballast first aid walk around or walk in board. Sorry, that's that one where I was telling you it's made so it fits over the circular panel on the actual plastic kit itself. And then we've got the other ones down here. There's another one there with the circular panel. And we've got our big wind trestle marks there, which look lovely. So, um, yeah, very nice indeed. Very nice set. And um, so there we go. Um, again, over here, you can see we've got this Rizia, whatever that is. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but basically, you'll weed this all on the on the paper. Take the RYSIA out. And then you're going to put a piece of transfer tape over the lot. Rub it down nice and firm. What I tend to do is put a piece of paper over the top and then rub the paper and that saves you catching any edges then. And then again, piece of masking tape under the bottom left hand corner, get it in position, remove the transfer tape and then spray your colour and then remove the, uh, the mask. So all very nice indeed. Um, as I say, go take a look at the other videos I've done and it shows you how to do all these roundels. And you can see the results here. Uh, you can see this is for the uh, Revell 130 second scale Hurricane. You can see how much nicer that is than having decals on there. Um, and there's been different processes used to do those two roundels there. You can see there's there's a roundel there. That one's painted on top, I think, on top of the camouflage. So, um, yeah, and then afterwards, as I say, you can very lightly sand it. You can take something like a, this is a 1500. That shouldn't be there. It's in the wrong slot. 2500. You can just very gently rub over and that will take away any raised edges you've got um, or if you want to weather them you can go you know carry on going and you'll bleach through so uh, there we are uh, and you can see there we've got the um the registration s over the serial number there on the back of the fuselage and that one there that's a little um little german fuel marking and that's actually three little stencils makes that that's yellow black and white paint and then here you can see we've got some of the writing like we've got in this model here you can see that over the sky band there. And then going over the page, <clears throat> here's some modern stuff. We've got a kangaroo there for the Aussie stuff. And then we've got some ejection seat markings here. This is all done with stencils. At the rescue there, you can see I've sanded that one to sort of try and weather it down a bit, bleach it down. We've got the American star there with the meat board in the middle. So sort of pre-midway. And then, believe it or not, that one there is also a mask. That's done with masks. That is totally painted. There is no decal there at all. And as you can see, when you look at it in the light, you've got no carrier film. There's no raised edge. There's no nothing. So basically, you can paint your model, put your stencils on, weather. You're not worried about clear coat and stuff. So if you've got something like the, the Tamiya 132nd scale Spitfire with its infinitely fine surface detail, you're not going to lose any of that detail with, with oodles and oodles of, um, of clear coats. So there you go. And you can see there how I've weathered that seven to really sort of bleach it back and make it look worn, like the sun's got to it and stuff. So, and you can see the same on that US Navy there. They are really, really worth using. Um, a question was asked, have I actually ever used these on a model? <laughs> and the answer is no. Um, the only models I've built that Sven has made the sets for um, is the <clears throat> the uh, one thirty second scale Hurricane, and I built that model before Sven released the set. The other sets I've got, I don't have the kits for, um, other than the A20, which I've got the kit for, and that, that kit is coming along nicely. Um, so I will be using it on that one. And then we've also got the Border Model Lancaster, which I'm working on. I'll be using it on that one as well. So you will see me using it. Um, if you want to see them used, you can go over to Zinzan's channel. He's actually used them on a Qatari Spitfire he was building. And um, you'll see the results from that. As I say, I've done lots of videos, different ways of using them, different different methods to get the same result. So, um, and then you can choose which you want to do. But, uh, there we go. Sorry, I forgot to say, um, I forgot to say, these are available in the UK from Hanans. So you don't have to uh, worry about buying them from abroad or anything and risking customs or paying silly postage. So you can go to Hanant's website and order them from there. Or you can go to um, onemanarmy.be. Okay, there's the website there. When you get on the page, top right hand corner, there's a couple of bars up there. Click on that and you can go and there's a list of suppliers down there. So you can find a local supplier in your country, a local distributor in your country. So um, there you go. 
Thank you for watching. Bye for now.